Item number, SCP-179. Object class, Thaumiel. Special containment procedures. SCP-179 remains beyond the reach of currently known groups of interest, including the Foundation. All containment efforts are to be focused towards a Grade 3 omission cover-up, coupled with the discouragement or sabotage of exploration and research missions that attempt to study cis-Mercurian space and orbits that go through it. Description SCP-179 is a humanoid entity located at a constant distance of approximately 40,000 kilometers from the south polar region of the solar photosphere, locked to the rotation axis of Sol. However, it does not orbit it. The most recent recordings of SCP-179 indicate that it seems to maintain a continuous orbit around the center of the galaxy. Through the combined effort of 43 years of continuous surveying, the external appearance of SCP-179 has been defined as a human female of undetermined ethnic group of between 20 and 40 years of age. Its entire bodily surface is covered in or composed of a matte black material. Its hair appears to be composed of this material, measures over 34 kilometers long, and is constantly pushed away by solar wind. However, this part of SCP-179 seems to reflect variable amounts of sunlight, this reflection being the phenomenon that indicated its existence to Foundation astrophysicists during 1940. Several markings or tattoos are placed throughout its bodily midline. Judging from their brightness, these markings might be of metallic composition and of a golden hue. These tattoos include several symbols that have been identified as those typically representing the Sun and the six innermost planets of the solar system, according to medieval alchemy, including in this order. The symbol of gold in the subject's forehead, right underneath the hairline. The symbol of mercury under the nose, circling both lips. The symbol of copper between the medial ends of its clavicles. Data expunged. Autosensor level SC4. Non-trivial cognito hazard detected with the anatomically correct shape of a human heart, placed over the location where a heart would be, in a female human of the same apparent age and bodily proportions. The symbol of iron in the upper abdominal region. The symbol of tin in the lower abdominal region. Part of a final symbol in the pelvic region. While the anatomy of this region makes its clear observation difficult, it has been hypothesized that the symbol of lead is also present and complete in the perineum region. SCP-179 keeps its ventral side oriented towards Earth most of the time, but it has been observed to look towards other areas on occasion. All further data redacted, as per Administrative Warning ES-026. Administrative Warning ES-026 As of SCP-179 has been reclassified Thaumiel. All involved personnel with a clearance level below 4-179 will be either promoted or reassigned to fit this new classification, depending on their relevance for the continued surveillance and cover-up operations as directed by the current head researcher for SCP-179. All reassigned personnel will be subject to Polymath 8 Memory Redaction Therapy, or D-Class Amnestics, in a high dosage grade, with a maximum retrograde effect of 10 years of experience depending on the time spent working in SCP-179 prior to its reclassification. SCP-179's existence will be subject to an Orbital Misinformation Standardized Intelligence Obstruction and Neutralization Campaign. As per Omission Protocol 4, most documentation related to SCP-179 has been classified Level 4. Top Secret. Any further data related to SCP-179 has been classified Level 5. Thaumiel and will be made available only to authorized 5-179 personnel. Be advised that unauthorized access to SCP-179 research materials will be considered a Type 3B offense. Unauthorized data management while lacking appropriate global clearance. Punishable by compulsory memory redaction therapy with immediate reassignment and or demotion. Warning! Unauthorized personnel will be exposed to a memetic defense agent. SCP-179 is sensitive to all radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum, intelligent, and able to communicate through multiple anomalous means, 
including but not limited to radio and laser communications interference. Only one instance of SCP-179 communication with Foundation personnel has occurred thus far, where SCP-179 proved to be fluent in French. As this contact did not result in a clear statement of SCP-179's intentions towards the Foundation and its mission, all efforts must be made to prevent contact by any known groups of interest with SCP-179. Misinformation operations and other preemptive measures have been deployed. Most recorded movements performed by SCP-179 have been related to extraterrestrial threats, both anomalous or non-anomalous in nature, on a collision or orbital insertion course with the Earth. These threatening items have been identified as capable of causing CK-class reconfiguration events, of diverse impact on human societies and earthly life in general, if allowed to reach Earth. If impact with Earth or orbital insertion occurs without proper response and containment by Foundation operatives, these items of interest may be capable of causing XK-class end-of-the-world scenarios. SCP-179 will usually address an item or items of interest by pointing at them with an arm and, when more than one item of interest is present, will be able to generate additional limbs anatomically identical to its arms, as needed. Survey data indicates that SCP-179 performs other motions specific to each item of interest addressed, such as raising different fingers or moving its arms in an array of as-of-yet undecipherable patterns at fixed intervals. But whether these motions contain any information or not has not been determined to date. The limits of SCP-179's detection capacities have not been clearly ascertained. While SCP-179 has been able to detect potentially harmful objects beyond the trans-Neptunian region, those threats had been detected by other surveillance and exploration systems, usually under Foundation control, or, in at least three separate instances, were visible to the naked eye from Earth. However, they had not been immediately recognized as threats. It has been hypothesized that SCP-179 may only detect and react to active threats that remain detectable to other observing parties, without the cis-Neptunian region, while being able to unerringly determine their harmful nature. All items of interest approaching Earth within cis-Neptunian space that had considerable destructive capacity have been detected by SCP-179 without failure, often when no observers known to the Foundation were aware of them. As such, SCP-179 and all personnel, orbital equipment, and facilities dedicated to its surveillance remain the most reliable early warning system the Foundation possesses to detect and, when possible, prevent potentially dangerous incursions within surveyed space. SCP-179 is able to determine which interplanetary objects pose a threat to Earth, humankind, or the Earthly biosphere, which makes it a critical asset for the Composite Orbital Early Warning System COEWS, project of the Foundation, which currently involves several undisclosed SCPs, Experimental Foundation Orbital Assets, Site-34, Site-103, Site-98, Area-8, several other undisclosed sites, and Command Site, as well as several personnel embedded within different space agencies and international consortia related to space exploration. All data of interest related to or obtained through SCP-179 will be marked COEWS-179, which will be considered high-priority information to all Foundation departments. Addendum SCP-179-1 Notable Movements of SCP-179 1312-1940 First recorded movement of SCP-179 The entity, that had remained with both arms crossed, raised an arm towards a previously undetected interplanetary object on a collision course with Earth. After its impact, in an event that damaged the city of Data Expunged, extensively with large quantities of an anomalous mucus secretion and left more than 1,300 dead, which, combined with the anomalous phenomena related to, redacted as per previous expungement. Remaining central item reclassified SCP-179 SCP returned to its original position. 2209-1942 Sixth recorded movement of SCP-179 The entity raises an arm towards on a collision course with Earth. Item of interest crashes nearby Auckland, New Zealand on 04 10 1942. 
item separates upon impact into several devices of mechanical nature. Data expunged, recently formed sub-entities with minimal civilian casualties. Once Foundation operatives contain the item proper, SCP-179 returns to its original position. Mobile Task Forces, all data on involved assets expunged from records, proceeds to track and destroy all remaining sub-entities. Date undisclosed. 18th recorded movement of SCP-179. The entity raises its right arm towards data expunged. Up to this date, the entity has kept one of its primary arms, shifting from one to the other as necessary, pointing in the same direction. 01-03-1949. 23rd recorded movement of SCP-179. The entity raises an arm towards an Amor-class asteroid that has adopted a collision course with Earth. The Foundation uses a combination of several SCP objects to launch a remote-controlled interplanetary vehicle that acts as a gravitationary tow line. This mission is announced a success on 0305-1951. At this time, SCP-179 returns to its original position. Note, surveying elements observe that the entity performed a motion that could have been a nod. Reclassification request to Euclid status filed and denied. 1312, 1998-403rd recorded movement of SCP-179. The entity stops watching the Earth for two days and 13 hours, when it looks towards the Jovian system. Once this interval is over, SCP-179 looks at Earth again. 0909, 2002-487th recorded movement of SCP-179. SCP-179 points at an armed Type 11 dimensional weapon, launched from Area 8, to test SCP-179's detection capacities. Item remains in a primed configuration for several minutes, ready to be launched at a test location on Earth. It is not identified by SCP-179 until it is 3,670 kilometers above the Earth's surface, when SCP-179 reacts to it as a threat and points at it. Device subsequently reconfigured to a standby configuration and redirected towards its primary target. Data expunged, still in transit from the Kuiper belt. SCP-179 returns to its previous position. 1610-2003. Contact with SCP-179 is achieved via the 2 probe. Subsequent movements registered in Addendum SCP-179-2. SCP-179 Reclassified Thaumiel Addendum SCP-179-2 Events of 1610-2003 SCP-179 was first approached by the 2 probe, a microsatellite, equipped with multiple recording, analysis, and communication devices, incorporated into a second probe in a clandestine operation. The probe acted as a relay for the 2 probe and Foundation Mission Control. Contact and communication with the entity were not foreseen nor programmed. When visual contact with SCP-179 was established, obtaining an unprecedentedly clear, very high-resolution image of its surface, the entity begins to move its lips, forming the phonemes of a greeting in spoken French. What follows is a complete translation of the exchange. SCP-179 Hello. I'm the Lookout. My name is Sal Susor. Do you like my brother? I like him too. He is big, so big, and so very warm. If you want to talk to me, please use your satellite to weave talk to me. It'll be easier than coming here. Probably. Entity remains immobile for approximately 10 minutes. Researchers assigned to SCP-179 detect this movement. Level 3 researcher Thomas Graham, who is fluent in French, is selected by head researcher to conduct a possible exchange with SCP-179. The 2 Pro is used as a radio relay from this point onward. SCP-179 is able to receive, understand, and transmit radio communications. SCP-179's transmissions read as a monotone, featureless human voice that speaks in French. The subsequent exchange occurs with a 16 minutes and 39.6 seconds delay between each message, corresponding to the distance between SCP-179 and Earth and return that will be omitted in the rest of this document. 
Researcher Graham, who are you? SCP-179, my name is Sal Susor. I am the lookout. I behold. I often see. I often warn. Almost always when I have to. That way, there is further life. Researcher Graham, what do you mean, the lookout? SCP-179, it's me, Smiles. Researcher Graham, we have noticed the significance of your movements. Who do you report to? SCP-179, to those who know where to look. To you, to those who want to look. Not just you, but you too. Researcher Graham, when you say brother, are you referring to the son? SCP-179, he is my brother, Sawel. He warms me up. He is carrying fire and loving light. He caresses me with his arcs and his voice and renews me. He is the source of all true light. He is your source. Researcher Graham, where do you come from? SCP-179, I was born a child. The entity nods towards Earth. Researcher Graham, for how long have you been in your current location? SCP-179, I do not want to tell you. Smiles. SCP-179 adopts a fetal position, remains looking towards the Earth, and pointing at face of the entity remains visible from the two probe. Researcher Graham, how did you reach your current position? How did you acquire the properties you currently possess? SCP-179, I was grown into a woman. This is how I live now. Researcher Graham, could you give us further details, please? SCP-179, no. Researcher Graham, we would like to know more about you. Why not tell us? SCP-179, I am sorry. I won't be yours. I can't belong to any one person. Researcher Graham, the Foundation's work protects all of humanity, all life on Earth. Don't you find this work of the greatest importance? SCP-179, yes, I am doing it. Look upon me and know. Researcher Graham, if we have understood your capacities correctly, we believe you could do far more than that. Sharing all the information you have, not just about the dangerous threats against humankind and Earth, could be of great benefit to all parts involved. SCP-179 I am too big, and you are too small. There is a sea of nothing, and islands of light. I am their shore. To you come the monsters. The pounding fists of void. The longing gods beyond our knowledge. I am the lookout. I see the ripples in their wake. You want me to pledge my sight no to you, only to you, so you, only you, can be greater. Even if you find, restrain, defend, you want me to be yours. That is not why I am here. There are others. Others I assist. Others I warn. Others beyond your thin walls of gray, dry paste rock. Others beyond the reach of your weary satellites. Others beyond the home our home. Others I know. Others I love. Others you won't care for. Others that came before. And, overall, others beyond the little walls of rules and bone and laws and flesh and memories and oaths you built around yourselves until you don't even remember them. Others I love. Dearly. And yet, only my brother is an equal to me. Researcher Graham, Excuse me, I don't understand what you mean by others. Could you please explain yourself with other words? SCP-179 Smiles, but I have no words left. Closing Despite several communication attempts, SCP-179 did not perform any other movements, nor transmit other messages. Up to this date, SCP-179 has not responded to any message coming from any Foundation contact team or any other efforts from known groups of interest. Item number, SCP-378. Object class, Thaumiel. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. 
Following the implementation of the Kraken Protocol on 2706-1963, containment procedures for SCP-378 have been updated. Personnel assigned to the SCP-378 project are to review its updated documentation as soon as possible. Claudia Southey, Director, RISA. Special Containment Procedures SCP-378 is to be contained in a subterranean entity containment terrarium. Temperature and humidity are to be maintained at levels optimal for the growth and habitation of Heterodermia cane crow, Utica cave lichen, and Prenolepis everettman, North American cave ant. Twice per year, SCP-378 is to undergo a medical and psychological examination. Access to SCP-378's containment terrarium is separated from the surrounding facility by a decontamination chamber. Handling personnel are required to wear full body protection and must be screened for SCP-378-A prior to exiting decontamination. Infected personnel are to be terminated unless the position of SCP-3781 or 3 is vacant, in which case they are to be assigned to the relevant position instead. As of the adoption of the Kraken Protocol, SCP-378's containment is focused on maintaining its three primary containment components. SCP-3781 is housed in the Area 19 barracks. SCP-3781 is employed as a maintenance technician with a security clearance of O-A19. Upon the death of the current SCP-3781, brain-dead or comatose reserve personnel may be elected to replace it. As SCP-3781 is the primary means of communication with SCP-378, care must be maintained to keep SCP-3781's vocal functions in working order. SCP-3782 currently takes the form of David Lockheed, a 36-year-old Caucasian male in the employ of the American Supernatural Containment Initiative ASCII, as a clerical aide, to maintain the continued operations of the SCP Foundation in the United States. SCP-3782 has been tasked with sabotaging ASCII operations against the Foundation, as well as collecting information in the Foundation's interests. SCP-3782 is expected to follow a strict health and exercise regimen due to the inherent difficulty in replacing it. SCP-3783 currently takes the form of Lisa Martin, a 33-year-old Mexican-American female employee at the Spicy Crust Pizza in Staten Island. In the event of SCP-3783's death, it must be replaced as soon as possible. Each component is fitted with a tracking device and an audio recorder. Each week, embedded agents stationed near each component are to evaluate the health and integrity of each component and its associated surveillance equipment. The utilization of SCP-378-A in further infiltration is pending Foundation Overwatch approval. Description SCP-378 is an arthropod, superficially resembling a deformed larval instance of Scolopendra gigantea, the Amazonian giant centipede. SCP-378's legs are largely vestigial, primarily meant to assist in peristaltic locomotion. SCP-378 measures 3 meters from mouth to anus, with a bodily thickness of 1 meter and a weight of 233 kilograms. Under normal conditions, SCP-378 is an omnivore, with a diet consisting primarily of lichen and insects. SCP-378 is capable of asexual reproduction at will, producing instances of SCP-378-A from its anus. Instances of SCP-378-A resemble adult Scolopendra gigantea. Dissection suggests this resemblance is superficial as SCP-378-A lack expected organ systems beyond a primitive neural network. Instances of SCP-378-A are controlled remotely by SCP-378. SCP-378-A are obligate endoparasites, infecting advanced primates such as humans, Homo ignotus, Data expunged, and Gigantopithecus sapiens, common Sasquatch. Upon infection, SCP-378-A integrates itself with its host's nervous system through poorly understood means, inducing brain death and extending SCP-378's remote control to the host itself. Vital functions and sensory input remain unaffected. Upon infecting a suitable host, SCP-378 will attempt to reintegrate its hosts into their respective species' social sphere. Once integrated, 
SCP-378 directs its hosts to indefinitely engage in the behaviors typical for its species, such as communal labor and social recreation. Human hosts prefer environments with a high population density and a robust entertainment scene. The upper limit of active hosts SCP-378 can maintain at any one time is unknown. Upon initial interrogation, SCP-378 confessed to the existence of 26 human hosts, as well as two instances of Alouada Pigra, Guatemalan Black Howler, and three instances of SCP-1000, of which it noted had been acquired during a period of heavy intoxication. Addendum 178-294-B A Psychological Evaluation of SCP-378 Conducted by Dr. Simon Glass Tentatively designated Scolopendra Animalia, SCP-378 is unique among arthropods, possessing either human levels of sapience or the ability to emulate its host's intellectual faculties. In any case, SCP-378 is self-aware and remarkably intelligent. SCP-378's relationship to its hosts is complicated. While SCP-378 maintains a consistent sense of identity across multiple hosts, each is treated as a persona for SCP-378 to roleplay. Hosts rarely interact with SCP-378 or fellow hosts, suggesting SCP-378 primarily utilizes its anomalous abilities for entertainment. This is further suggested by SCP-378's readiness to abandon such personas under duress. Aside from integration into human social spheres, host behavior is largely unique to each instance. Extroversion is relatively common. Hosts rarely isolate themselves except to sleep or excrete. SCP-378 appears to take equal enthusiasm in stressful versus pleasant situations. Of note, SCP-378 is particularly attached to the identity of Lisa Martin. In contrast to other hosts, Lisa Martin's weekly routine is relatively static. From 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on all days except Saturday, Miss Martin will show up to work at the nearest pizzeria from the former location of Digian Antonio's Pies, regardless of employment status or scheduled hours. From 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. on all days except Saturday, Miss Martin will engage in the maintenance of one of 17 rooftop gardens across the city of New York. Of these, 13 are maintained by a cooperative, 12 of which Miss Martin is not a part of. From 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturdays, Miss Martin alternates between socializing with a collection of friends, co-workers, and lovers, and playing piano for various high-end bars. From 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., Miss Martin will shower and prepare for bed. Miss Martin will sleep from 12 a.m. to 7 a.m., when she will wake up and prepare for the next cycle. In the event of Miss Martin's death, SCP-378 will direct another host to assume her identity. Attempts to interrupt Miss Martin's routine have been unilaterally met with unusual levels of hostility from SCP-378 and its hosts. From Assistant Director Daniela Hayden, Classification Level Rise of 4, Employee Number 134, to Director Kelsey Feinstein, Classification Level XK4, Employee Number 87, Regarding, 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 Identifying current hosts. Date 2704 1963. Director Feinstein. Mr. Song and Dr. Glass's work have revealed quite a bit about SCP 378. Most importantly, I do not believe it understands the significance of social dynamics, especially in regards to hierarchy and social capital. Several of SCP 378's identities held surprising positions of power. Indeed, Two of them, David Lockheed and Alfonso Liaz, are beyond reach of the Foundation's current capacity to contain. Despite this, SCP-378 has shown a willingness to sacrifice such hosts in order to defend, replace, or otherwise maintain Lisa Martin. Odd, yes, but useful enough. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to Miss Martin and her friends, would it not? SCP-378 is sapient but it by no means understands the significance of its actions. With a little bit of persuasion, David Lockheed might yet ascend from petty paper pusher for the ASCII, right where the Foundation most needs a puppet. 
And, if I'm not mistaken, Spicy Crust Pizza can always do with a second franchise. Proposal Employing SCP-378's anomalous abilities to defend Foundation operations in the United States. Council vote summary. Approved. Proposal accepted. The Kraken Protocol has been initiated. From Senior Researcher Sang Hun Song, Classification Level Gamma U3, Employee Number 148. Two, Director Kelsey Feinstein, Classification Level XK4, Employee Number 87. Regarding Delays in the Gamma U2677 Project. Date. 2107, 1965. So, good news and bad news, Director. Good news, as I'm assuming you already heard. With the plans for construction of Site 56, all thanks to a certain Mr. Lockheed, the Kraken Protocol's getting a much needed expansion. With its relative proximity to both the Lily of the Valley Nexus and the Pacific Northwest, it's a perfect opportunity to expand the scope of SCP-1000's containment while ensuring the ASCII doesn't suck LOTV dry before we get to it. For all its oddities, SCP-378 appears to be delighted at the prospect of a change in scenery. I can't imagine a tropical centipede grub likes having a sphere of influence limited to New England of all places, but that's besides the point. Its A was compliant enough on the way there. Which leads me to the bad news. Rupert Tremont's a fun little guy. Agent of the FBI's unofficial, unusual incidents unit, and all too stupid to trust Agent Ryans with his drink while he went to the restroom. After that, it's a matter of transport back to Provisional Area 56 in Black Rock, and a centipede down the gullet. Problem comes up when 378 tells us it can't establish a connection. Now, Tremont's still alive, so that's not normal. We run a number of tests, try to figure out what went wrong. And that's when we see a different centipede in his head, where our centipede usually goes. More to come, but I have a bad feeling about this. Item number SCP-411 Object Class Esoteric Secondary Class Thaumiel Special Containment Procedures SCP-411 is to be kept in a standard humanoid containment suite, an existential isolation facility. All reasonable requests made by SCP-411 are to be met where possible. A bank of television screens displaying 24-hour news coverage is to be provided for SCP-411's use. Requests for texts and devices that do not yet exist are to be filed until such a time as they can be assessed. At the moment, SCP-411 is not considered a containment risk. All information gathered from SCP-411 is to be stored at the Existential Containment Unit, and is to be disclosed at the discretion of Dr. only. All staff leaving Existential Isolation Facility are to be administered with Class C amnestics. Description SCP-411 is a gray-haired, blue-eyed, Caucasian male of incredibly advanced age. Estimates of his biological age, based on information divulged in interviews, are in the region of 400 years. SCP-411's nature means that special interview and linguistics training is required by all research staff. SCP-411 ages in reverse, growing younger at the same rate that a normal human ages. SCP-411's memory also functions in reverse. SCP-411 has no recollection of past events, but can recall the future. Much of the information we have gathered about SCP-411 originates from the work of a Dr. Lytacker, an individual who appears not to work for the Foundation as of yet, via the recollections of SCP-411 himself. As such, caution is to be used when applying this information. SCP-411 speaks an as-yet-unknown dialect of English that has significant grammatical and vocabulary deviations from modern English. Individuals who are to be given training in this language will benefit from a background in Spanish, Mandarin and or Cantonese, and Haskell. SCP-411's ability to recall future events is hindered by his advanced biological age. Events more than a few months into the future are often forgotten 
and the details of events in the near to immediate future are often vague and unclear. Events surrounding persons he is familiar with are often more clear, but omissions are not uncommon. In addition, deviations from SCP-411's memories of the future cause SCP-411 significant mental harm and can often render him catatonic for days. Due to the potential for valuable data to be lost in this fashion, particularly as one recollection often triggers other more significant recollections, SCP-411's memories are only to be acted upon in the following situations. 1. Risk of serious injury, security breach, or death of the founder. Mandatory. 2. Risk of K-Class Scenario. Mandatory. 3. Risk of Class 1 Security Breach. Mandatory. 4. Risk of Death of O5 Personnel. Advised. 5. Risk of Significant and Destructive SCP Containment Breach. Advised. 6. Risk of Class 2 Security Breach. Suggested. 7. Risk of multiple senior research staff deaths. Suggested. While a full course of training is required to interact with SCP-411, the following guidelines should be followed if emergency meetings are required. 1. From the viewpoint of SCP-411, your first meeting is your final meeting. Distress or other heightened emotional states are not causes for concern. 2. SCP-411 will reference events in your future as if they were in your past. Do not attempt to act on these events. 3. SCP-411's perspective on an event is roughly opposite to that of a normal observer. 4. SCP-411 will answer your questions before you ask them and will not recall any point in the conversation prior to your current question. Do not fail to ask questions SCP-411 has answered. 5. SCP-411's advanced age should be taken into consideration when interviewing him. Overlong sessions can leave SCP-411 physically and mentally drained. 6. SCP-411's overall memory is poor. For example, SCP-411 often cannot recall what he will have for dinner later that evening. It is unknown when Dr. Lytacker will join the Foundation but it has been decided that he is not to be actively sought. Upon his eventual recruitment, a data breach is to be staged, and all information regarding SCP-411 is to be wiped to prevent ontological paradoxes regarding SCP-411's abilities. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.